Renault Laguna Grand Tour, or VW Passat variant. In other words, the German bestseller meets the most popular foreign-built station wagon, which is the better car and offers more value for money. Both are ample sized vehicles at lengths of 4 meters 80 and 4 meters 90 respectively, and 1 meter 80 wide. So both cargo spaces should accommodate plenty, right? For station wagons, that's the key question. For the Laguna, the answer is yes, but. The back seats can be folded down quickly, resulting in a flat cargo space but the sloping rear window compromises use of the cargo space and the permissible payload of 432 kilos isn't much for a station wagon. It's a different story with the Passat. The headrests have to be removed before the back seats can fold down, but when they do, there's more than 1,700 liters of space and 570 kilos payload. That's how a station wagon should be. At the other end of the car, we turned from cargo space to engine capacity. Both models feature two liter turbocharged gasoline motors with 200 horsepower for the VW and 170 for the Renault. Both are equipped with a six gear automatic transmission. The Passat has a slight advantage here with its modern direct fuel injection system. Between the engine and cargo space, both models provide spacious and practical interiors in which four people can travel comfortably. In its design, the Renault displays a touch more class, confirming once again the good taste of French designers. The Passat also lives up to every stereotype of German design. Serious, sober with a conservative tendency, but everything well thought through. The German GPS system is easier to operate. Die Routen werden gerechnet. Bitte wählen Sie eine Route. Too bad there's no charming French voice showing the way in the Laguna. The rather shrill commands irked us. Fahren Sie auf der markierten Route. Okay, we'll stay on the highlighted route. We quickly determined that both models provide plenty of driving comfort. Engines and transmissions harmonize well, enabling both brisk and relaxed driving. The only disturbance in the Renault is the raw rumble of its four cylinders. Riding and wind noise in both models are moderate. Both ride smoothly on cobblestone streets. Small bumps are absorbed well and the absence of any rattling in the chassis makes the experience all the more pleasant. The final exams are on the test track, possibly the toughest hours in the life of a car. Three, three two, two, one, go. In acceleration and torque, the Passat wins by a nose, and that's although with 30 horses more, its 8.6 liters consumption is actually half a liter lower. In the fast slalom, both behave like they should, even with the stability control switched off. Thanks to its direct steering, the Laguna handles better than the Passat, which feels like a heavy car. But the Laguna loses its handling advantage when the road turns bumpy. Despite the very rough surface, the Passat remains well controllable. The Laguna's body does some serious jumping, not a pleasant ride for passengers in the rear seats. The choice then is not a hard one. In the Highline version we drove, the Passat may at 34,475 cost 15,000 euros more than the Laguna. But taking into account the lower maintenance costs and higher resale value, in the long run, the costlier car is actually the cheaper one. The Detroit Auto Show 2009 is taking place under dark clouds. The worldwide economic slump is having a crippling effect on the auto industry. 
but that hasn't dampened visitors' interest in the cars themselves, even if they're not actually buying them. America's big three, Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler, are in especially deep trouble and have been using the show to present their most efficient models. Not so the Germans. Mercedes showed off its radical SLR Sterling Moss, a pure sports car that dispenses with windshield and roof. The Mercedes Design Study Concept Blue Zero introduces the next generation B-Class. BMW is putting its faith, as usual, in sportiness. The new Z4 steel convertible roof combines Roadster and Coupe features. Active hybrid technology is on display here in this Design Study 7 Series BMW. Standard models should be available this year. The new Mini Convertible is attracting lots of attention from the public. The world premiere of Volkswagen's Concept Blue sports car proves VW's innovative spirit. The two-seater is powered by a 180 horsepower clean diesel. The U.S. is the largest market for cars in the world, but the crisis sparked by high oil prices and the credit crunch have sparked a change. Gas-guzzling monsters are out. New solutions are in. I'm going green. Everything efficient is better. I guess uh, the world's run out of fuel, so i got to start thinking. Everybody that's buying cars now seems to be looking for cars to get good mileage. German car makers are placing their faith in new diesel technology. Audi is looking to what it calls clean diesel and the advantages it offers. But diesel fuel is little known in the U.S. and faces prejudices. Uh, well, I don't know uh, that much about it. I don't really know. Like, I've heard of diesel, but isn't that what goes in, like, big trucks? Uh, well, it used to be noisy and stinky. I always thought it was dirty, <laughs> and it's loud. Well, my dad had an old diesel back in the late 80s. What some car makers did back in the 1980s is to blame for the bad image. But Germans are sticking with diesel, the modern kind, which is more efficient and cleaner than petrol-driven cars. Wolfgang Hatz is the head of engine development at Audi. He says many people thought tougher exhaust limits would spell the end of the diesel era. But the new engines prove that they can comply with the strictest environmental laws in the world, those in California. He says that is revolutionary. Audi is using an unusually tough test to give the Americans a taste for diesel. 23 vehicles with new diesel technology are crossing the continent in convoy. And 184 journalists from around the world are battling it out to see who can achieve the highest average speed with the lowest fuel consumption. The route leads more than 7,800 kilometers across 17 states. The new Q7 is one of the cars with the ultra-low emission system, the cleanest diesel in the world. The competitors pass quickly through the most different kinds of landscapes and cities. They are testing the engines under real American conditions. So far, it's great. The, the engine is pretty quiet. You can't tell it's a diesel at all. There's no engine clatter, there's no shake. They have a lot of torque, and uh, that's what makes them interesting, because they, have, uh, they are very peppy. We actually got stopped when we were at a rest stop by a person who was like, what are you driving? What is this? And when we told him it was diesel, he was really excited. Downsizing is the name of the game in the United States. No one wants the big cars anymore. They're getting cheaper, and the small cars are getting more expensive. Hybrid cars are also on the advance. They have advantages in the city, especially in stop-and-go traffic. But the clean diesel can keep up here, too. And it edges into the lead on the cross-country sections. It has another advantage over the hybrid. Americans like big cars, they, and they're giving those up begrudgingly. Very, you know, it's difficult for them to let go of those vehicles because it, that is the openness, the lifestyle of the, of the families in the U.S. Um, they, it almost dictates having a larger vehicle. So this allows Americans to have their large vehicle, but yet feel good about the vehicle that they're driving. 
In the past, diesel fuel was of poor quality, and that meant it was dirty. New low sulfur fuel made the introduction of new diesel technologies possible. By adding AdBlue, a urea solution, Audi has managed to sink nitrous oxide emissions by as much as 90%. But exactly where diesel makes sense out in the country, the filling stations are not able to supply it. Do you have any diesel out here? Diesel? No? Do you know some, some gas station around here? Uh, not that I know of. And where there is diesel to be had, it is highly taxed and costs as much as a dollar per gallon more than normal fuel. Politicians are called on to act. Audi is set to launch its new flagship, the Q7 Clean Diesel, on the U.S. market. If it proves successful, more models will follow. And the signs are promising. Market researchers predict increased acceptance in the United States and a tripling of new registrations for diesel vehicles by 2015.